The Ensemble podcast is intended for professional financial advisors. This content is created in partnership with our sponsor, Net Wealth Investments Limited, ABN 85090 569 109, AFSL 230 975, and is limited to publicly available information. Before acting on any general advice, you should consider whether appropriate and obtain financial advice from a qualified financial advisor. Ensemble does not hold an AFS license and does not provide any financial advice or services or endorse any general advice. If a PDS or IM exists, you should obtain a copy and review it thoroughly before making a decision. Advice tech. As if it wasn't enough to be across TMDs, Alpha, Beta, Rule of 72 and all the other nuances of financial advice. Now, advisors are expected to be across all the technology options too. And there's so many of them. But never fear, Peter D is here. Join me each week on a journey of discovery through the software and apps on offer for advisors and advice businesses. So let's dive in, fellow advice explorers. This podcast is proudly sponsored by NetWealth. Imagine a world of investment choice that goes beyond borders. Open up a world of investment opportunity with NetWealth, where you can access local and international securities, as well as bonds and foreign currency options for wholesale clients. Offer your clients flexibility, transparency, and efficiency with managed accounts, managed funds, and access to non-custodial assets. A world of investment awaits you. Discover it at netwealth.com.au forward slash woo. Hello and welcome to the Ensemble Advice Tech Podcast. I'm Peter Diamantitis and this week joining me on the show, she has tap danced on the steps of the Opera House, once worked in the shark infested waters of investment banking and would secretly love to get a paid gig as a movie reviewer. Thank you so much for joining me on the show, Peter Diamantitis. Woo! Now, I know, I know. It's really daggy to be introducing myself on my own podcast that I host. Um, but to be honest, I was a little worried that if the show started differently to the way it normally does, that we'd sort of all get thrown off our game and there'd be some sort of tear in the space-time continuum or something. So we're going to click along a little similar to the way we would, and then this is going to become something of a different um, podcast episode just for this week. Normally... At the beginning of the episode, you know, it's where I would get to know you and I would get to know the guest through the way they use technology. And funnily enough, I've actually had a number of messages from people saying, Peter, you know, you always ask the guests about their emojis and their apps they'd keep, but, you know, what are your answers to those questions? You know, please share. So given here we are, I'm the guest and the host for this week's episode, then Let's start. What is your most used emoji? Do you even use emojis? Well, absolutely, I use emojis. In fact, I think that they're a whole nother language. The top three for me are, when I took a look on my phone, they are the smiley face with the three hearts around them, the nerdy face with glasses, no surprises there, I'm a massive nerd, and actually the smiley face that's those swirly eyes with the tongue sort of sticking out, you know, it's sort of got the offbeat eyes and everything. So that's another one I use as sort of like, oh, things are, things are a bit crazy. In fact, my, my husband, uh, who is not on any social media, he doesn't have a single social media app on his phone or anywhere, and he actually uses his phone for calling people, would you believe? I mean, who would have thunk it? But he's actually been infected by my emoji use to the extent that he now give, gets great joy in messaging people only using emojis, right, and trying to stump them. And so recently he actually messaged his brother who lives in the States and who's coming out with his family to visit us, and he just sent them these emojis. He sent them a running woman, soccer ball, a world, a trophy, a ticket stub, and a party hat. Now, unfortunately, their emoji game is not very strong, um, and they didn't realize what they meant, and so we had to actually ring them to tell them, but he was actually telling them that he'd managed to get tickets for all of us to go to the Women's Soccer World Cup. So uh, we play a lot of emoji games in this family, and so we use them heaps. Now, the second question I normally ask guests is if you had to delete everything off your smartphone and just leave three apps where the only apps you're allowed to keep, which ones would you keep? All righty. Well, you know, it's not until you do this that you realize how much it um, it shares about who you are and what you love doing. So the first one, the first app I'd be keeping is Google Maps. 
not for quite the reason you'd think. Yes, I need it for directions. I'm hopeless. I'm not one of those people that once I've been somewhere, once I can find my way back. I don't pay enough attention for that. So I need it certainly for directions. But the main reason is every restaurant, every venue, every fun thing I have ever done or want to do globally is tagged in Google Maps for me. So I could have a mate that says, oh, Peter, we're heading over to Iceland um, for a bit of a trip. You know, we're going to drop into Reykjavik. Is there anywhere you'd recommend to go to a restaurant in Reykjavik? And I'll, sure, open up Google Maps. I'll zoom into Iceland and there it is. There's a star and I'm just looking at it now for a restaurant called Grill Markaduren, which was this amazing funky restaurant I went to in, in Reykjavik just before the pandemic. So I've got that for places everywhere I've ever been or want to go. Um, so, you know, possible activities or venues get saved this way. Um, if we're watching a TV show and they talk about, you know, it might be a chef and they're talking about restaurants or fun things to do or anything like that, they go in Google Maps and I star them or flag them as basically a target list of things I want to do. Now, the second app I'd keep would be IMDb. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I'm a huge movie buff. So IMDb, which is the internet movie database, is my go-to place to check, you know, where have I seen that actor before? You know, what's so-and-so in that movie? All those sort of questions that you have and you just can't quite, it's on the tip of your tongue and you can't quite remember. And basically, it's just a really healthy adjudicator of a debate that my hubby, hubby and I might be having about movies. So it's much easier just to check rather than arguing over something neither of us are very confident about. The third app I'd probably keep would be Bitmoji. This is actually an app that creates, uh, they get you to create your own cartoon avatar. So you pick your hair color and your eye color and all sorts of things and you create your own sort of cartoon av avatar and then it sort of loads you up um, into all these designs of these sort of little cartoon images. Um, they can be, you know, ways to wish people happy birthday. It can be you dressed up in green for St. Paddy's Day, all sorts of fun cartoon images for all sorts of situations. Um, and, you know, there's been days where the only way I communicate is with Bitmojis. So those would be my three. So now, you know, we're a few minutes in and I'm sure you're sort of wondering, you know, what in damnation is going on, Peter? Um, why isn't there a guest on this week's episode? Well, what you might not realize is today's episode is in fact the 47th episode of the Ensemble Advice Tech podcast. And therefore, today we're going to take a quick break from our regularly scheduled program to do a bit of a look back at our journey together over these some um, 46 hours of me gibbering away about technology and sincere apologies for that, by the way. Now, why is it 47? Well, I sort of wanted to pick a milestone that was a bit more, I guess, creative and unusual than, say, 50 episodes or 100 episodes. Now, my geek is going to start really showing here, folks, so strap yourselves in. Stra strap yourselves in. <laughs> Not only is 47 a prime number, but it's actually several different kinds of prime. It's a safe prime, a super singular prime. It's an Eisenstein prime. You know, it also happens to be a Lucas number, a Carol number, and a Keith number. So for maths geeks like me, it's a pretty darn special number. So I therefore chose this numbered episode, episode 47, to be our milestone episode where we take a moment to just revel in our journey so far and then even talk about what we've got coming up in the future. So you're going to hear from some listeners like yourself today. We're going to reminisce about the guests and the apps we've had on the show. And I'm also going to share the single biggest insight on Advice Tech I've picked picked up thus far. And if you're a super fan listener, then I'm betting you've probably picked up on it too, as we've sort of traveled along, along together. First up, let's just hear from one of our listeners who kindly sent in a voice message to the show um, and hear what they've got to say. Hi, Peter. Elisa Burns here. Thank you so much for recording your podcast every week. Um, I really enjoy listening to all of the new things, all the new fun things and seeing if they will work in my business. Um, I would really love an episode um, about projections or modeling tools that you have seen or that are available. Um, we currently use X-Plan, but it's so clunky and not client friendly. So looking for something that's um, a bit easier to use and hopefully a bit nicer to look at. Thank you. 
Thank you so much for your kind message, Alyssa. I'm completely with you. The interviews have caused a fair few things to be put on my wish list, actually, um, both the interviews and the Curiosity Corner apps. In fact, in my ideas vault, which is the place where I sort of collect all the future growth ideas for the business, I've been adding all sorts of things um, so that when the right moment arrives, I can go back to the vault and go, all right, you know, what might be the best solution for this particular challenge that the the business is creating? So I'm, I'm right there with you. I've been adding a lot of things into that ideas vault. And when I sort of look back actually at all the Curiosity Corner apps and websites I've shared, those little weird and wonderful things that I've come across, then the top three for me are, uh, have, are all things that I've ended up actually using myself um, that weren't just things I looked, you know, I came across and said, oh, that's interesting. I'll share it with the audience. <laughs> These are actually things I've used. Brain FM, which is um, one of the ones I mentioned way back in episode three. Uh, this is music that's scientifically proven to increase your focus. And I use it all the time. In fact, when I was brainstorming what I might cover in today's episode, I set a timer in Brain FM for about an hour and chose some deep focus music and sort of really knocked out the work, you know, knocked out what I was going to cover and what the sections would be and all that sort of thing. So I use it all the time and get some huge value out of that. The second uh, app is, is, and I still don't know how to say that, Sankey Art, S-A-N-K-E-Y-A-R-T. That was a more recent one back in episode 38. And I've actually since used it in a load of cash flow conversations I've had with clients. This tool actually is basically creates diagrams that show the money flowing in and out. Now it's used for say businesses to sort of translate, um, you know, P and L and other tables or, or assets and liabilities and things in a simple way, but it can also be used for personal uh, cash flow situations. And I just find that it makes these wonderful graphs that are much easier to grasp than most spreadsheet-driven graphs. And so I've been using that a fair bit. The third Curiosity Corner app that's actually uh, got used a bit, and this is just because I love being the cool auntie, right? And so love, you know, sort of making the kids really excited about stuff. Um, and this was back from episode seven, I think, and it's an app called Brickit, um, B-R-I-C-K-I-T. And basically you can hold your phone using the app over a pile of Lego bricks, just random, you know, the normal random pile. That's, that's what happens after the first time you buy Lego. Anytime from that point on, it's just all this random rubbish. Um, and it will give you instructions of what you can make out of those bricks, not just, hey, here's a design, but also the step by step of how to pull it together, uh, which is beyond awesome and makes you look awesome as an adult doing Lego with kids. Now, if you do want to check any of those out or any of the other Curiosity Corner apps that I've mentioned in the past episodes, then our wonderful podcast producer, Kieran, makes sure to include the links to those apps in the show notes for each episode. So if you just head to the Ensemble Advice Tech Podcast landing page, so you could just literally Google Ensemble Advice Tech Podcast, it'll take you to a page that sort of has them all listed one after the other then you'll be able to find the episode that I've mentioned and the link directly to that particular app. And here's actually another listener message um, for the Advice Tech Podcast. And thank you so much for sending these, by the way, folks. I'm really, um, really grateful for taking the time. Hey, it's Sam Woodhouse, founder of Intune Financial Services. Uh, before listening to the show, I thought it was all about finding the ideal software. I tried, uh, you know, finding that perfect CRM. I never quite found it. And then I listened to the show and what I thought was after listening to a couple is why don't I just try a few of these? So I grabbed, you know, my prosperity, product reps, Pluto Soft, and just start implementing some of these. And what I found is it's really about that tech stack that you want. And I think that's a mindset change for me. It's like a client coming in and thinking there's one ideal plan. That there's no one ideal tech stack. It's really about building them together and what you want your experience for the clients to look like. And I've really enjoyed the portability of changing providers at time and really thinking about what do I want my client experience to look like and what tech is providing that at that time? Because I know in five years time, it's not going to be all the providers that I use today. Wow, wow, wow. I so agree with Sam here. Asking ourselves 
you know, what do we want our client experience to look like is such an important touchstone for us when we're considering our tech stack. We can spend a lot of time thinking about ourselves when we're doing this. Whereas if we use the client experience as the touchstone, I think it can make a whole lot of those decisions a whole lot easier. And, you know, I'm in here, I'm running, you know, I've been sort of doing this podcast with you and running running past you all sorts of pieces of tech, you know, over 40 of them so far. And there's loads I haven't even covered yet, right? There's still more new tech out there. Um, at, but the last thing we should do is think that there's one perfect thing we should just pick. Yeah. So having a reason for looking before we research and then just having a try of things can mean that over time, you can evolve your support infrastructure, meaning your tech stacks, into something so powerful and really unique to your practice and your client base, right? So this is an evolving beast. You know, we're not in the hunt for the one perfect thing. Um, we're looking for things that can add value, that can evolve with the way we do things and with the services we're pro- providing. In fact, actually, you know, now that I think about it, when Clayton actually asked me to host this podcast, it was really important to me that I made things easier for you, the listener, not harder, right? I didn't want to overwhelm. That's the last thing I wanted to do. If I could just get the founders or experts from each app to chat about their specific piece of tech enough that you would just get a sense of it, right? Um, then and work out, is it even worth your time of digging further? All while maybe you're out walking the dog or sitting in traffic, then I figure I've saved you some time and sort of narrowed down your research for you. So that was sort of my mission when I approached this. The last thing I wanted to do was overwhelm. Um, I just wanted to sort of do a bit of the legwork for you so that then only if it was of interest, could you take it any further and then expend a bit more time. In fact, it turns out that when it comes to where you, the listener, absorb the podcast from, whether it is walking the dog or or in traffic or, you know, maybe it's exercising, whatever it might be, interestingly or not surprisingly, I guess, a significant chunk of you are listening from Australia, but we have people and a, a fair number actually listening from the US, from New Zealand, from South Africa, from the UK, and the United States. Arab Emirates and everyone give a big wave across the ocean to Brett Evans and the team at Atlas Wealth, who I'm sure are a good portion of those downloads over there. Um, the, however, what's interesting is the numbers, of course, start dropping off rapidly in terms of downloads after that with, you know, a few in Greece and other parts of Europe. We've got downloads, a few downloads in Korea, Nigeria, Kazakhstan. Okay, interesting. But when you look way down the bottom of the list of where the podcast gets downloaded, the two countries globally we don't have any downloads are Mauritius and the Ukraine. Now, I'm not sure that those two countries have ever been referred to in the same sentence. So that's an odd but interesting combination. And clearly, I need to work harder over the next year to get that full global coverage happening so we can say we've got listeners in every country in the world. Now, in terms of what device you're listening to the podcast on, you know, I've got to apologize to all the Android users as clearly, you know, Apple Podcasts is a clear winner here with a massive proportion of the episode downloads. Spotify comes up a distant second, which sort of makes sense given they're spending a whole lot of time promoting podcast content to, you know, their members. So we'll see if those numbers start to change in the future. In fact, next up, we have a lovely message from someone who is a podcast host himself and might have some views on what we listen to and what value we get. Oh, g'day, Peter. It's Tim Henry. What a cool idea this is. I've actually got SpeakPipe. And I've never thought of using it like this. I've just got it sitting on my website of the podcast and uh, just doing nothing. <laughs> so you've inspired me there. Well done. Yes, enjoy the podcast a lot. Um, probably the one I enjoyed the most was the one about Microsoft 365Y because even though I do enjoy listening to some of the software providers out there and how they might add value, I just thought that one, it's just a topic and something that we use, all of us use all the time, and um, how can we use it better? So if there was going to be any um, thought on uh, rolling out other episodes, I even reckon a series on (laughs) Microsoft would be unbelievable because we've actually got massive resources in there with Microsoft that none of us even don't know about or don't know how to use. So... Um, that would be awesome. 
I am going to be trying to reach out to you soon to come on again. I'm going to kick off our podcast soon, but um, well done. Keep going and uh, chat soon. Have a good weekend. Oh, yeah. I'm with you, Tim. Coming up, you know, in the next lot of episodes, we have plans for a few things, actually, where we sort of evolve the way that we um, pull together the interviews we do and the value that I want to make sure we keep on adding. The first will be, um, will be, doing sporadically feature episodes. Now, this is where, you know, I'm going to have a debate with either somebody from the industry or an expert outside the industry on sort of topical tech challenges we're all facing. You know, first up in a week or two will be a debate on balancing the trade-off between scaling our businesses through efficiency and creating bespoke and unique customer experiences. You know, what's the line? How do we manage to sort of balance those two demands? Um, and how do we make tech decisions accordingly? Uh, the second thing we're going to be doing going forward will be sequel episodes, right? Just like movies, we're going to have we're going to have number two of those guests returning, where we're going to get the guests back again for an update on their app since they last spoke to us, um, and. What I want to do here is make sure you get to keep up to date on what they're all doing. The pace at which these apps are changing is accelerating and they're all coming up with all these wonderful ideas and the introduction of AI into all of this has meant that's gone even faster. So I want to make sure you guys have, are kept up to date. And in fact, when we do the sequel episodes, you will um, I will mention the first episode that you can go back and listen to to get sort of that foundation understanding so that then you can listen to the latest one as sort of like the update. Um, on the latest features. And the third element um, we're going to be bringing to future episode will be deep dives. You know, this is like Tim mentioned, um, we're going to be taking your feedback and doing deeper dives into certain um, elements of tech. You know, whether it's diving into, you know, an episode for per the individual apps within suites like Microsoft um, or say just, you know, some episodes on the client portal features across various apps, just those features, um, then that's something we're going to be doing as we go forward so that you can really get your head around those sort of um, sort of deeper understanding of particular elements. To that end, in the show notes for today's episode, we will be including a link to SpeakPipe, which is actually how those messages you've been hearing through through this episode. That's how they got sent to me. It's a simple tool with a link where somebody can just leave you a little 90 second message. Um, and I'd love you to head over there to that link and leave me a message letting me know which deep dive you'd like us to do first. Is it a deep dive on Excel or Word or Google Drive or Teams or is it on modeling tools available as per actually Alyssa's uh, comment earlier? Uh, you can find the link at speakpipe.com dot com forward slash peter d that's p-e-i-t-a-d so please share your requests um if if i don't get specific requests i'll just pick the ones i'm interested in but i would love to hear which ones you would like to hear and we'll certainly bump them up the line now last up in the voice messages i'll be sharing today is one that speaks directly to my single biggest lesson from all of these interviews Hey, it's Adele Martin here, and I just wanted to do a quick note to say that I have been loving the Ensemble Advice Tech podcast. The host, Peter D, has a unique gift of being able to make something complex simple, which is not easy to do with technology. Um, there's been so many valuable insights so far, but probably my top two has been uh, the app Tango. I was using Loom, but Tango, to be able to capture process and turn it into a step-by-step -step guide, I think has been um, a great and a game changer and sort of that step up from using Loom to record processes. And of course, the second one is just getting me to look at my technology that I'm already got and making sure that can it already do what I want it to do. Like if I'm already using X-Plan, that's got a new client portal, like do I need to reinvent the wheel? So I think that will be the other thing is to make sure I'm getting, you know, and using my tech fully that I've already got. So yeah, so many insights, um, so many, so much value and yeah, definitely loving it. You know, there are some great ideas and new tech avail available to us, but the truth for every single person listening to this podcast, advisor or not, is we are using a tiny proportion of the technology we already have at our disposal and we're already paying for. So what do we do about this, right? I mean, what action can you take? Well, we need to start treating technology 
like the core asset it is. You know, it's the equipment we need to do business. You know, do great farmers look after their equipment, maintaining it and keeping the staff up on their accreditations and licenses to use the equipment? Of course they do, right? It's ingrained, it's scheduled, and anyone who doesn't behave that way is seen as a pretender, not a farmer, right? We need to behave the same way ourselves. We need to bring some rigour to our technology approach going forward and treat it like infrastructure. What that means is we don't expend a whole lot of effort once just finding the thing and implementing it. We make it a regular part of programming. You know, start building an infrastructure strategy for the business. How often do you do technology stock takes? You know, what's the retraining schedule you have for technology in the practice for your team? You know, how often are you going to revisit your process design and what does that look like? And what's the discipline you're going to put in place into how often you implement new tech and how often you're going to let yourself uh, utilize new tech? You know, we take so much time and effort, understandably, onboarding, training, and performance managing staff. Um, and we all do. It doesn't matter whether you're a small practice like um, like mine or, or a huge practice or even maybe you're within a large corporate. You know, it, all of that, we all expend a lot of time on recruitment and training and retention of staff. We need to apply the same rigor to technology, software, you know, and I guarantee you we're going to unearth all sorts of value in the tech we already have. I mean, you know, if you think about how much you use a tool like Word, so just think about something like, you know, Word or or Outlook. When was the last training you did on that? You know, retraining, understanding all of the new features, all the new things you could do. Most of us never have. We've ne- some of us have never done any training on that and we've just learnt it ourselves, right? Maybe that's a little insane. Maybe we need to take this a little more seriously. Um, and I think, you know, applying some rigour and structure to that will make sure, you know, every dollar we spend on technology, whether it's advice tech or it's just tech generally, um, is getting us some wonderful bang for buck and making sure we can uh, spend less time on the manual stuff and spend more time on the wonderful interacting with human stuff. So, well, look, I hope that was a little bit of an off-road advice tech adventure for you today. Um, You know, it's a bit of a shorter episode, uh, but, you know, next week, I promise we'll be back to regularly scheduled programming with, you know, a mix of apps you haven't heard from before, some SQL interviews on apps we have had before, and, you know, another feature episode for a bit more chaotic fun. Um, But before I wrap up, I do want to just sort of take a moment to thank you sincerely for the time you have so generously given me. Um, I'm very aware of how busy and overwhelmed we all are. Uh, So the fact that you're letting me join you each week to share my gibbering um, as we discover together, you know, the latest tech out there for advice practices is an honor that I honestly don't take lightly. I'm really keen to continue doing this while you are keen to hear more advice tech conversations. So please be sure to reach out on the Ensemble platform to share whether you're still getting value from the podcast um, and any ideas or things that you'd love to have me investigate a little further for you. Well, that's all we've got for this week. It's a short little punchy one, folks. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast so you'll get your advice tech fix automatically sent to you each Friday. And if you'd like a speaker at your next event or for a webinar for your group, perhaps running them through habits to streamline their tech stack, set up some of that discipline around uh, technology, then, or even to make innovation an everyday part of the practice, then please reach out to me on LinkedIn at forward slash Peter MD. That's P E I T A M D. Otherwise, I'll look forward to turning up in your earbuds next week. And remember, advice explorers, stay curious.